Hey guys, it's Aiden and welcome to part two of the Bruise and Scar Wax Wound series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do scar wax wounds, so let's get started. Okay, as always, the first thing we're going to do is clean the hand to remove dirt and grime. And I've already looked at some reference pictures, so the next thing I'm going to do is kind of pick a place to put this wound. I'm going to do a kind of slit cut sort of in between these two fingers, which sounds pretty painful. In a cup here, I have some Prozaid. It's a medical grade adhesive that's pretty standard in the special effects industry. It's the second strongest adhesive, the first being Telesis, which is a silicone adhesive, but we're not gonna be using that in any of these tutorials anytime soon. So with a Q-tip, I'm just applying it to the area that we're gonna end up applying the scar wax. Much like Elmer's glue, Prozade goes on white and then dries clear and tacky, so I'm gonna apply this and then let it dry. Next, I'm gonna grab our scar wax, which is basically a wax that has some other properties in it that are special for makeup. And they come in many different flesh tones. I have a lighter flesh tone here to match my own skin. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit out with a tool and then I'm gonna start rolling it into a small snake. You don't need as much as you think, so I'm halving it here. And we're gonna roll it into a snake and then start spreading it onto the area. It takes a little bit to get it pretty smooth. You can use a tool as I am here, but the important thing is to get it as close to skin level as possible so that we can really create the illusion. And we'll be using paints to do that as well. Baby oil can actually be used to smooth scar wax down even further. So I'm just putting a little bit on my finger and rubbing it over the scar waxed area. I'm coming back in with the tool here just to refine the smoothness a little bit further. Next, I'm gonna grab our friend the stipple sponge to add texture to the scar wax, which will again help it really blend into the surrounding skin and replicate some of the pores and other surface details that can be found on skin. Once everything is smoothed over, I'm gonna take a semi-sharp tool such as this to cut in the actual cut itself. And this is where making sure the scar wax looks like the skin around is important. So the cut really just blends in and looks realistic. Some people do two little snakes of scar wax to build up a cut, but then you don't really get the edges that you would want. Now we're gonna move on to painting. I'm gonna bring back the Skin Illustrator palettes that I've used previously. The great thing about Skin Illustrator, I forgot to mention, is because they're alcohol activated, when you use them to paint on skin, the alcohol evaporates, leaving just the pigment, and it's pretty difficult to smudge or wipe away. I'm gonna speed up the painting process a little bit because it's, you know, based on personal preference and what you can see with your own eye to make it realistic to the skin tones. But basically I'm gonna just build up color and layers as I've done before. Once the base skin tone is complete, I'm grabbing a smaller brush and I'm gonna use a blue vein color to replicate the veins that kind of pass underneath the cut. My mom got pretty grossed out about this part, but it's all about achieving that realism that we want.
Next, I'm gonna grab my Skin Illustrator effects palette and start adding some depth to the inside of the cut. I'm gonna start with a darker color and then do a more fleshy blood color around the sides of the cut. And then I'm gonna apply a blood color over top to create an illusion of blood. We will be adding blood eventually. Now it is blood time. This is a store-bought blood. You can make your own and come to think of it, that would actually be a pretty good tutorial. Um, one trick I learned is to mix the blood with a little bit of dish detergent. And what that will do is create a more slippery surface that the blood will stick to the skin. Sometimes it can beat up and we want to avoid that. After mixing, I'm going to just apply a little bit of blood inside the wound. And this is key. Applying a little bit is very realistic. Um, this is not a Quentin Tarantino film. We don't need it shooting out of the wound. So just gonna apply a little bit and let it drip out very naturally. And with that, the look is complete. That wraps up part two of the Bruise and Scar Wax Wound series. Stay tuned for part three where we put the techniques together to create a broken nose slash black eye. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. Thank you for watching.